Welcome back. This video is part of a series on the basics of texturing in Maya and Photoshop. In this video, we will be looking at offsetting the lighting of the model's surface through the use of bump mapping and subsequently its newer counterpart, normal mapping. Bump offset, whether it be bump map or a normal map, is the process of defining the surface depth of a material so that either in a renderer or a game engine, light can interact with the surface without having to define small details in geometry. In our case, this will be things like having the spaces between boards being inlaid in the surface as well as having the nails poke out or be set into the boards. Bump or normals can be generated in a couple of ways, such as through direct texturing in an image editing software, which we will be working with, or through the creation of high poly geometry that can be baked into a texture. A good example of this can be seen in these character models from Assassin's Creed 2 by Nicholas Collins. Both the soldier and the statue are lower poly in-game models whose surface has been given the illusion of much greater depth through texturing, and most notably through normal maps. Starting from the beginning, bump is a grayscale map where the neutral surface can be thought of as a 50% gray and the values lighter will be given the appearance of coming out of the surface and any values darker will look pushed in. Normal maps define similar information but do so in a more complex manner and each of the red, green, and blue channels of the image exists a different view of the same surface with lighting information from three different angles. This gives the software the ability to triangulate the surface shape, allowing for more clean and accurate lighting. In regards to our crate texture, we'll be starting off in a very similar manner to create our bump map as we did with our specular. Starting off, I'm going to create a new folder for this, which I'm just going to call bump. And as I mentioned, a bump map should start off with a neutral surface of a 50% gray. So I'll start off by giving it that. Now, the information that I generated to use in my specular map can be used to help offset my bump. The lines that define the spaces in between boards, in this case, I would like to be darker than my surface so that they can be pushed into the surface of my model. And as well, the nails, I would like to have with some, some slight variation. In this case, I think I'm actually going to make them inlaid into the, the surface. So I can just take and reduce the brightness of them until they are just slightly darker than my surface. I'll go ahead and save this out. And just as before, I'll go ahead and give this a specific name, so crate underscore bump. Back in Maya, I can now take this bump map texture and apply it to my material. Opening up the hypershade, I can look at my material, and I have the option for bump mapping. So just like before, I'm going to go ahead and choose a file to apply to this. And one thing that happens with a bump map node is that it actually ends up creating both input for the texture as well as a bump 2D node, which differentiates in Maya whether the bump input is 2D as a bump map or 3D as a normal map. For now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this alone. But it's a good time to show something that can be done in Maya with the hypershade. So if I right click on my material and I tell it to graph network, it will take all of the elements of my network down here and lay it out nicely for me to see. By switching between these, it's uh, is a quick introduction. We have the material as a whole. And for most of these, we have the file that's inputted into either slot the place 2D texture nodes are something that Maya tends to use on its own, so we don't really need to worry about. And in the case of my bump, this is where it would go. And that particular texture is input into this bump 2D node that if I use a normal map, I would have to switch this value 
from bump to tangent space normals, but for now we'll leave that alone. And I'll go ahead and I'll load in my bump texture. And something like bump, <coughs> being a little bit older, and I'm working with a newer version of Maya, will show up a little bit more accurately if you go to the renderer tab under your perspective view and switch it from their newer viewport 2.0 to the legacy high quality viewport, which will give you a little bit more of an idea of what this will look like. The normal maps will show up better in viewport 2.0. But as you can see, a little bit more clearly, the nails have been hammered into the surface of my crate. If I were to put a little bit of extra time into this, I may have some of the nails sticking out, some of them being pushed in a little bit, and giving it a little bit of variation so that it's not so uniform across the surface. And from here, the only other thing that I want to work with is getting a little bit of the wood grain in here. So just like before, I can take the boards that I have pulled the saturation out of, in this case is an overlay layer still, but I'm going to want to reduce the opacity of this pretty strongly. Now the surface of my boards, if they're a little bit dry, will be a little bit warped, and so therefore the, the surface will be affected by the wood grain. If it's a more a healthy board and more flat in surface, then the wood grain will probably not even be a part of the normal or the bump in very much of a degree. So for now, I'll go ahead and I'll drop this down to 15% and see how that looks. And as well, because I do have paint on here, I can either take the paint and duplicate it over making it that 50% gray so that it's not affected by the wood grain if I wanted it to look a little bit more like it's thicker paint and it's laid on a bit heavier or I can leave it out and give a little bit of that surface detail of the boards to come through my my paint and again we want to keep this wood grain pretty neutral so even though it seems pretty light in my Photoshop document I may drop it down a little bit more alright so my finished amount of having the wood grain as a part of this is only about a five percent opacity over the top of my neutral color now definitely some things that I'm seeing as far as the label that I've put in, I do want to have this be on top of the breaks in the board. So what I'm going to do is take some of those elements and touch up the values that I have. And I've gone ahead and put a tiny amount of bump on my paint to have it give it a little bit of a bevel to the edges of it. I don't want to do anything too crazy with it just because it's relatively flat on the surface. But giving it about a 5% increase in value in my bump will help give it a little bit of a pop. And with that, I think that my bump map is complete. Now that my bump map has been generated, I can take that information and turn it into a normal map. 
There are several pieces of software available that can do this for you, but today I'm going to be showing this in Crazy Bump. Most often I end up using Endo, which is part of the Quixel suite to create my normal maps. I also know people who use a program called Awesome Bump. So there are some options out there for you to find what's a right fit for you. In Crazy Bump, what I'm going to go ahead and do is use their pretty simple interface and click on this button to begin. I'm going to open a height map, which is going to be my bump from file. And I will go ahead and find the file on my computer. And once I load it in, what it will give me is a preview of what my texture is going to look like, as well as some sliders to start messing around with it. Now, the trick to getting a good normal map out of this program is to play around with the sliders until the look that you get is appropriate to that of your object. Now, by default, this is a really intense, sort of rounded off shape, so I'm going to play around with the sliders a bit until I get something that I like. Bringing down the very large and large detail will help sharpen up some of these shapes a little bit and give you a little bit less of a bubbly look to your work. Alright, once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and save this out and save normals to file will be fine. I'll go ahead and call this crate underscore normal and there we go back in Maya I can now take a look at my graphed out material and first of all change my crate underscore bump texture over to my crate underscore normal texture and as you can see it gets a little bit strange here but we have to remember to switch the bump input to a tangent space normal and from here, what I can do is switch my renderer back to viewport 2.0, and I should be able to get a good look at what this will look like. And it appears, given that I am using Maya 2016, that my normal map was not showing up in the viewport 2.0 renderer, which is apparently a an issue that's been happening with this version. So if you end up running into a similar situation, down at the bottom of the screen you can bring up your script editor, make sure that you're in the Mel tab, go ahead and type in this as you see on my screen, OGS space hyphen reset, and that will reset the color management for the renderer which should make normal maps and bump maps work correctly. If you don't have this problem, disregard this, but it was an issue that I ran into, so it's worth mentioning for everybody else. So now that I have that dealt with, my normal map is showing up correctly in the viewport 2.0 renderer, which if you end up playing around a little bit between the high quality and the viewport 2.0, they, they give a very different look Viewport 2.0 is going to be a little bit more accurate to what any game engine in a more modern sense will look like. As the name might suggest, uh, high quality is an older version by the legacy prefix. And with that, I have all of the necessary information to have my finished crate. Thank you for watching. I hope this video series has helped you to understand the basics of texturing. The techniques in this series can be applied with variation on all sorts of models. There are definitely more techniques out there in regards to most steps in the process, so keep learning and happy texturing.